Wi-Fi is something that people expect. They have it at home, they, they have it wherever they go, they, it really is a basic need for them um, to have it available. At the end of the day, the guest comes first and always has for us. Today when somebody arrives, they, they want Wi-Fi. It's like having a phone or a TV. We wanted to provide the best Wi-Fi solution that we could for them uh, to give them the best satisfaction, but at the end of the day, it's because the guest needs it. The Wi-Fi implementation that we had before Ruckus was very patchy. You know, we determined that we had to fix that. You know, in the Caribbean, with our hotels, is that the construction is very, very different to what you typically see in the U.S. In the U.S., if you go and look at some of the resorts or even business hotels, um, regardless of where they are, they are typically a concrete shell uh, with a lot of drywall inside. Um, maybe some concrete slabs. Uh, it is very easy to shoot multiple rooms by putting in a couple of units on a floor and you can have the whole place covered. Uh, in the Caribbean, uh, for us, all of our hotels are, are brick. I mean, they're built out of concrete and steel. Very heavy construction. Getting coverage into that environment is much trickier than, than what I think most people face when they're dealing with a standard hotel. Range, reliability, and cost were everything. It's, it's like asking, you know, how important is food and water and air? You know, it, it's all, for, for our decision, and I think for, for probably anybody who's really taking a close look at their, at their application, their, it, it, it's the overriding set of, of, of factors. The performance that we found in testing with all the various units there was, there was no comparison. There was, there was literally no comparison. Is that the latency that was introduced on the Ruckus was very, very, very low, which meant that if we jumped two, three times, it wasn't going to hurt anything that the customer wanted to do with it, whether they had voice over IP, Skype, and the rest of it, or whether it's something that we wanted to do with it, um, such as the Wi-Fi phones. Uh, the other solutions that we looked at, you know, the, there were some that could do the mesh and could do it fairly simply, but the latencies that were introduced were ridiculously high. Um, and you know, you'd, you'd go two jumps and you'd see 250 milliseconds. The importance of 11N to, to our rollout and to future rollouts um, is actually very high. Uh, we did not implement anything but 11N on our first rollout for these 200 units. We, we went straight to 11N. I wanted to start with this bigger bandwidth. I, I wanted to have the flexibility that if I needed to do a lot of mesh jumps, and we ended up doing a lot less than I thought we would, but if we wanted to, we didn't want to have any kind of problems. Um, secondly, uh, we could support more clients. Those two, I think, are two main reasons why we went N instead of G. The performance of the unit was better than anything we tested. The range that we got in the real world walking these sites after we put some of these test units in the structure um, was fantastic. It just, just blew apart anything else that we tested. In terms of the ability to mesh and how easy it was to implement, literally it would take you two to five minutes to set up a zone director. Then you plug the units in and the zone director tells them all they're part of the group and what they're supposed to do. And that's it. You take the unit, you plug it in somewhere. You plug it into the LAN, you plug it into PoE, or you plug it in just to power, and it takes over. They come up, they talk to the zone director, they talk to other units, and it was dead easy. The, the, the stuff that we looked at in that two months, there was nothing else that was that easy to set up. With this equipment, it, it, was, it was literally half the price of anything else that was in that category, but the performance was twice as good. And it was twice as easy to set up.